I'm sure you know by now that Finance at Freddy's is a massively popular video game series with a lot of entries, main games, and spin-offs. And while there is quite a lot of cut content from these games, none of the games themselves were ever cancelled. Except there was that one Roblox spin-off that got released but wasn't supposed to so it ended up being scrapped and development restarted, but uh... Either way, there weren't any official games that got cancelled that we know of. However, that cannot be said for abundance of fan projects that sadly got canned. Hi, I'm Kip Ashley. And and cancelled FNAF fan games, am I right? Hey, who the fuck threw that? I know that GoMotion already made a video about cancelled FNAF fan games, but that was basically three years ago and talks about mostly surface level cancelled FNAF fan games. And I guess to an extent, these are also decently well known, so... Hey, don't click off yet! Since it's been three years since 2021, there have been a lot more cancelled FNAF fan games that have come to life, and I want to talk about them because I find not just video games, but any kind of media that end up kicking the can one way or another super interesting. So today, I'm going to be covering why and what happened to these FNAF fan games that never came to be. I'm not going in any particular order or anything, but I thought I would start with one of the most recent, well-known, and weird cases of a cancelled fan game. So first, we have the infamous Five Nights at Freddy's Plus, or just FNAF Plus for short. And if you somehow haven't heard of FNAF Plus before, let me explain what it was. Viznom, aka the main and sole developer of FNAF Plus, was an already experienced game dev, working on various other projects before FNAF Plus. He used to actually work on the original Pop Goes, another fanverse project, and made a shadow over Freddy's and Pork Chop's Adventure, which actually has a sequel to the game called Pork Chop's Horror Show, which was cancelled but then uncancelled, which has still yet to be released. But anyways, what really starts the story is a fan game made by Fiznom of the original Finance of Freddy's 2, called Another FNAF Fan Game Open Source, which had previously been named Finance of Freddy's 2 Open Source. This game was uploaded to GameJolt and made for Fiznom to practice using a game development engine called Game Maker Studio. After the game was released with a public beta, it was shortly taken down by Scott Cawthon himself, due to there being too many similarities in his eyes. However, Viznom wouldn't go down that easily, and emailed Scott Cawthon about the takedown, which involved into a conversation with him and Scott. Scott could see that Viznom obviously had a lot of potential. Hell, the fact that FNAF 2 open source was only a beta was pretty amazing considering it looks phenomenal and was released almost 4 years ago by now. Anyways, Scott at this time was in the process of creating the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative, which if you don't know, is a sort of collaboration hosted by Scott himself that funds some of the most popular and high quality fan games, while giving them extra benefits as well, such as console and mobile ports, along with toys and other kinds of merch. So when Scott announced the Fazbear Fanverse initiative on the FNAF subreddit, what do you know, Mr. Fiznom had secured one of only 5 spots of the official fan game that would be a part of the program. The hype for this was real, especially for FNAF Plus. In fact, this post is the third most upvoted post of all time on the subreddit. Everyone was excited. But obviously, if this project had continued, I wouldn't be talking about it in this video. Throughout the next three years, FNAF Plus would have a steady stream of showing off renders, recreation of the rooms and objects, and even analog horror videos. This would all end up going down the drain due to an official FNAF game actually. The DLC for FNAF Security Breach, simply called Ruin, was released on July 25th of 2023. Viznom decided to stream himself playing the DLC on his YouTube channel, which started probably one of the craziest domino effects in FNAF history. <coughs> now before I go on with this part, I want to make it very clear that you should not go out of your way to harass Fiznom or anyone else that was partaking in the events of the story. I won't be mentioning names besides Fiznom because, well, he was the main developer of the game, but that doesn't mean you should go and dog on him for something that he's obviously learned from. Anyways, onwards to the events that took place. <coughs> Viznom during his stream of playing the Ruin DLC would show his distaste for it, and just being negative about the game in a joking manner. My mouse is still invisible. Shut up, Gregory. Not a big deal. People can have their opinions, but after clips of him saying this about the game started to circulate on Twitter, it ended up causing quite a bit of controversy, as by this time, he wasn't making as much progress on FNAF Plus as he used to, so some saw this as hypocrisy. One such user, who I'll not be naming to prevent harassment, and also because they got in another controversy and ended up deactivating on Twitter anyways, so that's kinda ironic I guess, would make a joke calling FNAF Plus boring, something in which the grand scheme of things was also 
very harmless. This tweet ended up getting some traction, and as some of Fiznom's fans saw this, it would send terrible things to this person, such as death threats, and just flat out gore in general. Because this is obviously something that is super unacceptable, after this got out that this was happening to this person, people wanted a response from Fiznom, in which he did reply, but not really taking it seriously. Big mistake. This caused a huge backlash from not just a majority of the community, but even some of his friends. And rumors started to circulate about him, which people were more willing to believe, since he was already in a bad light. The next three days, from August 3rd to August 5th of 2023, were simply a series of unfortunate events, to put it lightly. On August 3rd, Fiznom was removed from the developer section of the FNAF Plus Steam page and subsequently banned from the discussion forum for the game. The next day, Fiznom would release a nearly 40 minute video of his point of view on the subject, apologizing for everything, announcing a break from the internet, and most important to the story, announcing that he would no longer be developing for FNAF Plus and able to answer any questions about the game per his contract. Then finally on the 5th, FNAF Plus would be taken down from the Steam store, and over a month later, every single video posted on the FNAF Plus channel would be privated, while every single FNAF Plus Twitter post would be deleted, and the account was privated as well. When this happened, it was essentially the final nail in the coffin. Over three years of hard work was scrapped and has now become lost media for the foreseeable future. When this was announced, there was a lot of mixed opinions about this. People were saying that it was unfortunate to see the game getting cancelled, but others were even and celebrating, saying that Fiznom deserved it due to his behavior. Now this is gonna be scary for some of you, but alert, opinion incoming! <laughs> I think what happened was really disappointing to see, but probably the best outcome of the situation. From my speculation, it seemed that Fiznom was definitely becoming disinterested in not just the project, but FNAF in general, as could be seen with his opinions with the Ruined DLC. And to continue a project that you're not passionate about just makes you feel really shitty. I know that feeling. As for his behavior, I mean to me it just seemed like he was joking. Was it a bit distasteful? For sure, but I don't think it should have cost him his spot in the fanverse, especially when knows his fans fault who sent the person all those terrible things, which he had no control over. Yeah, you can make the argument, oh well he needs to simply control his fanbase better, but when you're as big of a creator as Fiznom, that is simply just not possible. You are always bound to get a few bad apples no matter what. That is simply what I feel about the situation, you can agree or disagree, but what is done is done, and FNAF Plus will sadly never see the light of day. Um, what the fuck are you playing in your background footage? Now, a lot of people weren't happy with that conclusion. One particular person who goes by the name of Lost Pop Play actually ended up remaking the game slowly throughout the month, simply by using teaser screenshots and videos and remaking not just the models, but also programming everything else. Yo, what the fuck is that? This ended up exploding in popularity with tons of YouTubers and TikTokers playing the game. Now, to me, I have an extremely mixed reaction on this. On one hand, I have actually played the remake myself, and I can say it is extremely well made, especially considering everything was remade from the ground up just using references, which is super impressive. It's fucking mind boggling to me that this guy was able to do all this by himself and not have it looking like a complete dumpster fire. On the other hand, I feel as if this game really shouldn't exist, and FNAF Plus should simply be dead in the water to respect Fiznom's wishes. I haven't been able to find an official response from him, but I doubt he would be ecstatic to see someone revive his creation that he wanted to leave behind him. It's a double-edged sword that I really can't choose a side on. One thing that does make me favor towards the side that the remake should have never existed, however, is the fact that the phone guy is actually an AI clone of Scott Cawthon from the original game, which generated a lot of controversy, especially on Twitter. Being in this place, two weeks ago, one of our security guards working the night shift died here. His body was found in the costume. And even Daco actually made a video on the game, but he subsequently took it down because Scott himself asked for a video to be taken down, as he wasn't comfortable with his voice being cloned like that, which is super understandable. Why Lost Pod didn't just use the original calls or have a voice actor do it, I don't know, but it's just a stupid mistake at the end of the day, so I'll cut him some slack as he mostly didn't have any harmful intent using an AI voice. After this, Lost Pod would make a statement about quitting working on the game, however, he did want to release one final version of the game, 
which removed the AI phone calls and replaced them with a real voice actor from Twisted Mind Studios, the dev team behind the Return to Blade Knights, which is another popular FNAF fan game. Lost Paw wanted to gain permission from Scott himself to upload this game, but as of now, he hasn't responded, a most likely one for the foreseeable future. Although it is nice that Lost Paw learned from his mistake and tried to make things right. Oh yeah, also this is definitely gonna catch you off guard, but you know Geometry Dash, right? Okay, I promise this isn't coming out of nowhere, but the 2.2 update dropped nearly 7 years after the 2.1 update dropped, which brought a ton of changes, especially with the level editor. And somehow, some crazy motherfucker out there recreated FNAF Plus inside the Geometry Dash level editor. I couldn't even begin to make this up. Like, look at how crazy this fucking shit is. This is fully functional. You can't make this fucking shit up. This is one of the most unique cases of a cancelled FNAF fan game being revived, and definitely the most popular one being revived as well, with how many people played it and saw it. So while this game is now fully cancelled, I want to know what you guys think about this entire situation in the comments. With that being said, I'm going to repeat to not harass or attack Fizdom, as this happened months ago and he's moved on from it, or reportedly starting another project, which is the Pork Chops Horror Show game that I mentioned earlier. Let him work on other projects, and on that note, let's move on to the next game. So for the next games, I definitely won't have as much to say as I did with FNAF Plus, but this is a cancelled game that I actually covered the prequel for in a previous video, which I'll link in the description if you want to check that out. Five Nights with 39 by 39 Games, or Justin Hall, is a comedic and offensive fan game centered around the character 39 the Bunny. Now like I said 10 seconds ago, I already covered this game in a different video, so if you don't know much about it and want to know more, you can go watch that and come back here. If you don't want to, that's perfectly fine, but you might not understand a lot of the lore of the game and such, which yes, surprisingly, there is lore to this game that started out as a joke. After Five Nights with 39 was released, Justin would work on a new title called Five Ventures with 39. Now you would think this would be the game that got cancelled, but nope. This game came out with relatively no issues besides a scrap build that is actually available for download. That's not what I'm going to be talking about. A direct sequel to Five Nights with 39 was planned that was simply called Five Nights with 39 2. This game had very little information on it when it was first announced, besides the fact that it be a continuation of the last game. According to the wiki page I found, this is a description of the game's page. The continuation of Five Nights with 39's story. 39 is far more worse than before. After his failed attempt to escape in Five Ventures with 39, he has accepted that he must face the ultimate fear, bring his mind to peace so he can finally awaken. Though one failed attempt to return to the advert studio left him with a scar over his eye and with a state of catatonia, thanks to the rogue animatronic, Accurate 39, now a scarred 39, his whereabouts are currently unknown, last being procured by an unknown man in a van. Meanwhile, more accurate models of the alternate Faz crew are being designed and tested. A rookie night guard must face the somewhat expected behaviors of these new animatronics until he is summoned for his new task. Now for a long time, this was all the information there was to this game, as it was cancelled in early 2019 according to Justin. But just very recently, he actually made a blog post on Game Jolt with essentially every single planned feature, scrap gameplay, and other content. Since this is quite a long read, I'll be watering it down because I don't want to just regurgitate this blog word by word, and I'll leave a link to it in the description for anyone who wants to check the full thing out. A bit more information we get about the story is that this would be taking place a week after the events of the first game. There would actually have been two different locations in this game, the first three nights taking place in Tubby Blue Bear's Pizzeria, which is just an awesome name by the way, and the last two nights would take place back in the advert studio. There would actually be multiple characters introduced in this game, although most of them were actually revealed in five ventures like Blue Bear, Shakisha, and um, Yiffer Tubard the Fox, which apparently he just goes by David now. If he is brought up more, I'm just gonna call him Yiffer because that is 10 times funnier than some boring ass name like David. And then finally, Nightmare 39 and Accurate 39 who are new to the series. They would each have different mechanics with some being similar to Justin's other projects and would be more like an actual FNAF game with having you to keep track of multiple animatronics. There were two planned endings for the game, a good and bad ending, which would have been decided on how long it took you to reach the end of Night 4. I'm not going to tell you what the endings were,
forward because I highly recommend you read this for yourself. To be honest, the bad ending is pretty depressing. Now this all seemed great in concept. Obviously, like I've been saying, this game was cancelled. But unlike FNAF Plus, we do get a concise answer from Justin. According to him, he simply thought the game just had way too high ambition. And while he could have definitely pulled it off, Justin wanted to go in a different direction. Something which favored atmosphere and story instead of a complicated point and click title, to which he would end up promising on this claim. Almost right after he cancelled Five Nights at 39 2 in early 2019, he would get to work on a Five Nights at 39 Impurity, to which I'm just gonna call it Impurity because I've been saying Five Nights at 39 way too fucking much. This game would be made in RPG Maker and to this day, Justin is still releasing teasers and updates for the game, with the game supposedly releasing this year actually, and being the final game about 39 and Justin's final game in general as he plans to retire from game development. It sucks that the game was cancelled as the footage I've been playing of the scrapped game honestly looked pretty solid, but I can understand that Justin wanted to put more time into something he truly had passion for, especially since it would be his last game. I'm pretty sad that Justin decided that this would be his final project, but in the end, that's his choice and whatever he is happy with is fine by me. I hope Impurity turns out just great. Also like FNAF Plus, this next game I'll be talking about is a remake of an existing game, but unlike FNAF Plus, it was actually supposed to be a remake of a game that the creator of the remake also actually made. Running in the 80s was a FNAF fan game that took place in Fredbear's Family Diner, only taking account for the first four official FNAF games. And I know someone is going to make a joke about it, yeah the name is similar to that one initial D song. The game was developed by There Is No Stake and released on August 7th, 2020 to a positive reception. However, there was a rumor that was going on at the time the game had a trojan inside of it, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically just a virus or malware that disguises itself as something else. This wasn't true however, since this was Stake's first game she released at the time. I'm guessing she was a relatively unknown creator, so Game Jill didn't take any chances and took down the game's page. This incident combined with the fact that Stake wasn't happy with Running in the 80s led her to work on the COG Forever Spinning, which was also known as Running in the 80s Rebooted. But I'm just gonna call it the COG Forever Spinning. Now while I was doing my research for games to cover, I came across this game's page and put it as a potential game I could cover. But the next day when I came back to the page again to check it out some more, it was actually deleted which really piqued my interest. I looked to try to find a file for the game, but I couldn't find anything that seemed legit. I was, it was all supposed re-uploads, but I was suspicious one of those people would have put an actual virus inside of it. So while I thought it was gone forever, I found out Stake had actually made an entire archive for her past projects, and this included the COG Forever Spinning. I'll leave a link in the description to this project archive for anyone who wants to check out the original running in the 80s game, The Cog Forever Spinning, and other projects Stakes had created. But I actually can't find a whole lot of info on The Cog Forever Spinning itself, but you had to go to the internet archive for for the original page which reads this. April 1984, Fredbear's Family Diner has decided to cast one of its current employees as a night watchman following various developments within the company. The job is simple, watch the cameras, and don't let anything get in or out of the restaurant. But things can never be simple, not when Fazbear Entertainment is involved. Nothing is as seems, so will you walk the line and learn the truth, or will you succumb to what lies behind closed doors? Like I said, the game was just a reboot of running in the 80s, while it sucks that it was cancelled, it is pretty complete for the most part. Playing the game, everything is super smooth and just works perfectly fine. The atmosphere is really creepy, and one thing that really stood out to me was just how cool the camera system is. Like yeah, it works like every single other camera system in the main FNAF series, and like every other fan game, but I think Steak was really cooking with the aesthetics of the entire system and such. Now, I tried looking everywhere I could, but I could just not find a reason as to why this game was cancelled. That is, until I was watching another creator covering this game, Echo Next, who you should check out by the way. I had a post from Steak in the video, giving her reason as to why she quit the project. The post must have been deleted because I really could not find this shit, but to make it short, Steak said that the cog forever spinning felt like an obligation to make, and even though she did enjoy making the game at times, it came to a realization she would much rather focus on more original projects that would be more fun than the COG Forever Spinning. One project she is currently working on is a different game called Graveyard Shift at Freddy's. Now sadly Graveyard was actually restarted due to parent hard drive malfunction which was caused by Fortnite. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for laughing but that's just really fucking funny. But she is still working on the game which is good to know as I know that would have really killed the motivation for some developers. So I'm glad she is still working on the game. And you should go support her and check in for updates if you're interested.
Now this next FNAF game is probably one of the most unique cases of a game being cancelled, because it was actually released to the public after it was cancelled, due to the game being a rejected pitch for the fanverse. Now some of you might be hearing that detail and know what this game is, but for those who don't, I'm talking about Afton Built. Afton Built was a fan game by the dev group Gelatine that took place right after the events of FNAF 3, where you play as a mechanic who was one of the engineers that was responsible for maintaining the Fazbear's Fright Horror attraction. A cutscene plays which depicts you you, the mechanic, saving Springtrap from a fire, and if you're wondering, oh why the hell did he do that, well he didn't know that it was possessed with William Afton's soul. Later on however, he does find this out and then teams up with him to build him a new body that works, and if you're wondering, oh why the hell did he do that? Okay, this time I don't have a good answer for this, I don't know why the fuck he would do that. That is essentially the main gist of the game. There's a lot more details on the game Joel page if you want to read through it more. Now to me at least, I really did wish this made it into the fanverse. However, Scott thought otherwise as he ended up declining the project, seeing it as too ambitious for the fanverse. The community manager, Notori Skyne, posts an FAQ on the game's page. She would give a lot of important information, such as the fact that the game couldn't be crowdfunded because it's illegal and Scott himself didn't approve of such, the team being very demotivated due to this rejection, which is very fair, Jelly Liam, who is the man behind Gelatine, signed something which prevented him from talking too much about the project, which is assumed to be an NDA, this will be very important later, and the speculation that Scott perhaps had the fear that the game wouldn't be finished due to how big it was, which is kind of ironic if I say so myself. Now like I said, the entire team was devastated and demotivated to hell upon this news. All the game would need is a proper budget to be completed, but it would never come to be. Everyone on the team decided to take their losses, everyone except for Jelly Liam, who was pretty understandably frustrated. Because of this frustration however, Jelly Liam seemed like he wanted to take his frustration out somewhere or to someone, and that's what he did. On April 18th, 2022, another content creator, Thef King, would make a video on Afton Bill, which included an actual interview from Jelly Liam, who said some negative things about Scott and the fanverse as a whole. This was strike one. Now I got all the information here afterwards from Tyler Land's FNAF controversy iceberg, so definitely check that out as it was quite a big help. Anyways, after the video was released, Jelly Liam definitely had a recollection of some sort because he wanted parts of the videos cut where he said some of these things, and later on, he would want the video itself entirely deleted. Death King would only remove a single word from the video. That's right, a single word, which basically did fuck all because the word that was removed was the word Discord, as it was revealed that Gelatine and Click Team aka the people behind the Click Team Fusion engine which was used to make most of the main FNAF games and were also helping with the fanverse, had communicated through Discord, essentially revealing that Liam had broke his NDA. This was strike two. Now if you don't know what that means, keep in mind I'm not a lawyer, I just found this with a quick google search. If you break an NDA, it can result in quite a bit of consequences if the person whose NDA you broke decides to pursue it. This can be a wide variety of things, such as lawsuits, having to pay financial damages, and even fucking jail time in some cases. So this was pretty serious and caused quite a bit of controversy. Kane Carter, the creator of Pop Goes, which is a fanverse title, talked to Liam and he thought that breaking an NDA would only result in a cease and desist for the game he was no longer developing. Now obviously, this was not the fucking case because I just listed three different things that could happen if you break an NDA like 15 seconds ago, and this was just really stupid and selfish to do. As it was also later on revealed that Liam did not talk to any other members of Gelatine about agreeing to this interview. This was when Liam would go to Theft King asking for the video to be removed, but not just for the video to be removed, he would claim that the other fanverse developers were threatening to report him to Scott Cawthon to take legal action. This was strike three, and you're out! If you have been paying attention, which I hope you have, this was obviously a lie. Kane Carter was the only person who even knew that Liam had broken the NDA, and Liam only said this to try and make this even more serious to have Death King remove the video. And you know what Death King did? Well, for starters, he did not do what Liam asked him to, and instead screenshot the conversation without Liam's permission, which he only wanted Death to see, and then putting that screenshot in a pinned comment of the video letting everyone see it, and then proceeding to insult the fanverse developers. Now I know we've already been on strike 3, but this is basically like if Death King went up to the base to hit the ball and then immediately got striked out. Liam would end up making a public apology for the entire situation and to everyone who got involved, saying he let his emotions get the best of him and it was just a bad decision overall, then taking a break afterwards from the community. I don't know what the fuck prompted this, but apparently 4 months after the video came out, which is basically like 2 decades in internet time so this was mostly long forgotten by now, Liam would delete some screenshots from Death King's Discord DMs except for a handful, and then screenshot those and post them online as to somehow defame Death King, but take that 
with a grain of salt because I could not find these anywhere, and I don't want to watch Steph King's video on it. If Liam was like a spark, Steph King would be like Michael Afton using that spark to light a match and throwing that match on a gasoline covered Fazbear's Fright. It really sucks to see what happened to Afton Bill, and although it is definitely very unlikely by now, I hope this project somehow gets revived one way or another because it just had so much potential and soul behind it. The demo itself really shows that. I have never seen a concept like this in the FNAF community before, and if Gelatine doesn't do it, I hope someone somehow tries to tackle it on, whether it be a different approach or not. As for Jelly Liam himself, he has been radio silent ever since this incident, especially on Game Jolt, where his last post was two years ago. I hope he's doing well, along with the rest of the team. Jelly Liam made some mistakes due to his frustration with Afton Built, but he owned up to it, which is always something I'll respect, as there are a lot of people who don't even do that. Perhaps one day, he'll come back with another project, as he is also the main developer behind the Final Night series, but I guess only time will tell. And that's basically it. I really hope you enjoyed this video and going back to see the FNAF fan games that never came to be. If you watch this entire video, I would like to say that it really means a lot to me, and the fact that someone is even remotely interested in something I have to say just makes producing these videos all the more worth it. Another reminder that this video was based on GoMotion's video of cancelled FNAF fan games, so go check that out. And you should go support every single creator behind these cancelled FNAF fan games and their future projects. I'll leave either their game page or social media in the description below along with my own twitter account because i have one of those and if you're interested with what i do you should go ahead and follow me there because i've been meaning to tweet more and i'm just more active there than the community tab anyways while you're on your way to do that or not to do that go ahead and like the video if you liked it subscribe if you loved it as i'm planning to do more content like this and just tell me what you liked disliked or want to see in the future in the comments below but i think my time is finally up here i'm gonna go cry over what we could have had i'll be on my way now stay safe and see ya. Hey, does anyone remember the return to Freddy's?